What's up guys? Let's check out the Evelyn Sorceress. So this is a figure that I knew I wanted the exact second I seen it. Like, beyond the shadow of a doubt, this was one I absolutely wanted them to make. See, I'm the kind of person that likes the, um, the mirror image enemy. I like those secondary takes, the reflection, the evil side, or so on and so forth. I like Spider-Man and Venom. I think that's really cool. I like how they mirror each other. And I also enjoy aspects of that in other villains, such as Doc Ock is very much the kind of person who Peter could have become had he chosen a different path. And then I also enjoy things like, especially recently, with things like Masters of the Universe with Motu, I happen to really like um, Anti-Eternia He-Man. I thought that was really cool. I like that dark side, but I also like Faker, because that's like the mirror image enemy, the guy that kind of looks like you, but has none of your values kind of thing. And I tend to enjoy this kind of aspect in many different kinds of fiction. I enjoy it quite a bit. So when I saw her, and we've already talked about this before, one of my all-time, if not my all-time favorite magical character design ever is the original Sorceress. I have liked that character even since before I was into Motu. I thought her design was fantastic. So to see this, I knew I wanted this. A dark Sorceress that played right hand to the Skella God. You know, that was... That blew me away. Seeing her instantly, I was like, they have to make that. They have to make that and I have to have it. Well, as of yet, I have not been able to get my hands on the Sorceress from Masterverse. But I got this. So let's check out the box and then we will go over the character. So the box, once again, is an absolute wonderful piece of artwork. Without a doubt, the rendering of the character is fantastic and it's going to look great on the upper wall display that I've created because that is coming along really cool and it looks really awesome. But as they release more Masterverse figures, I'm going to come across a problem where I start to wonder how I'm going to get them up there. If they just keep releasing and releasing and releasing, I'll deal, that. I'll deal with that when it happens. But either way, this is really cool. Of course, we have the little words on the back and everything. It says, of all Skeletor's evil warriors, there is nobody he relies on more than Evil Lynn. She was instrumental in his quest to destroy He-Man and steal the powers of Grayskull. For her service, Skeletor named her new Sorceress of Castle Grayskull. This gift, however, comes with a curse, as Sorceress Evil Lynn is bound to the castle, making her its and Skeletor's prisoner. And that is very true. That was a very, that's a, that was a written rule of the mythology until the end of Revelation. And if, I, and I love Revelation, but if I was to critique one part of it, I would critique the idea that now the sorceress has broken the rules and she's no longer bound to the castle and she just gets to go anywhere she wants to go. So she's like one of the most, if not the most powerful entity that exists and she just kind of gets to roam everywhere free. Um, it hurts the mythology a little bit, but if they play off it right, who knows? Maybe we're moving in a really cool territory here because maybe the next series, Revolution, deals with the fact that she broke the rules and maybe there's a very specific reason that you need be tied to the castle. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, the other characters that we might be able to get in this run are Evelyn, Frosta, Roboto, and Stratos. I want all of them. All of them. Um, this Masterverse line is terrific, and I've seen very few characters, even ones I don't like, that I don't want. Stratos is not a character I like, but I've seen him in Masterverse, and his character is so cool looking that I want him. For a display, for a figure, he's fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to having him as, long, as well as everybody else. Let's open her up, and let's check her out. All right, let's talk about the figure. Now, right off the bat, I did have to do something with her, and I would suggest always check your joints and don't force the joints. If you're new to collecting, sometimes these figures, they come and they're 
they're tight, okay? Sometimes too tight and they don't actually work the way they are intended. It's very easy to fix. You can either run them over, uh, run them with a, uh, with a hair dryer for a little while. Just kind of watch, don't overheat them, but kind of boo, and then test their joints and they'll, they'll open right up. Or you can do a running water, like running hot water, run it under there for a little while and then chest. Uh, the, her, um, her foot was like sealed. It would not move at all. Don't force it because sometimes if you come across a problem like that and you try to force it, you'll break them. Um, so I noticed that her wrist didn't really want to move and this elbow was fine in terms of its, its dual, its dual joint. That was absolutely fine, but the other one was not. It didn't want to move. It would only do this and then it didn't want to move any further. So running under hot water, like I said, there it is. The double joint works fine. So no, no issues there. She is fantastic. I like the idea of a bat over the idea of the falcon. Uh, not necessarily that I like her more, but I really, like I said, I like this kind of idea in general. She came with two extra hands, which is pretty cool. So uh, she came with another gripping hand for the other side and another posing hand for the other side. So you can run that however you want. She came with her staff which is a pretty cool item in general. But if I had to complain about one thing in the sorceress design for Evil Inn, it's that this wasn't extended. I feel like once she became this, the staff should have went all the way down, hit the ground, probably given her like a point, uh, like Lord Zed's staff. It went down it, and then it had that point at the bottom so it would like stab into the ground and then up at the top I wish like a bat would have come out of the thing and then personally I feel like that would have been a much cooler design but I'm not I'm not complaining at all so I took the cape off and there's a reason that I took the cape off I'm not mad at the cape or anything like that uh, for one I may heat treat the heat treat the cape a little bit and kind of pull it out because I'd like for the cape to kind of go down across the sides here and kind of leave the middle a little more exposed because right now when it comes down, it kind of comes down across one side more than it comes down across the other side. Not 100% sold on that, but that could, that's something I can fix. Um, the reason I took the cape off though is because there's these little areas right here that you can slip into her, uh, her arms and that, that interests me. I'm not sure if... In fact, just to be sure, we're going to pull the wrist. Doop. There we go. Still a little wet from running it under the water, but that's okay. And then we're going to pull this also. Doop. So there. Those are the two hands that we are currently using. And I want to get these in there. So we're going to sweep it here. So there it is. That goes on there, and then the other one is right there, and that also I want to go on there. It's a, uh, it's a little tricky, but it's it's fine, and it works, and that's all that really matters is that it works. Because this is going to be cool. This is going to be a cool effect. So what I'm doing here to kind of move into the camera a little bit is that these little things here, I'm slipping them over the wrist. So you slip them over the wrist. Ugh, it's really tough all of a sudden. And it, the camera, I have an autofocus camera just to make it easier for myself since I'm just me. But uh, that's the reason it doesn't focus on what I'm doing necessarily. But okay, now let me show you what I did here a little better. Let me get that. So you see that? There's these little things right here that are connected to the cape and then that connects to her arms and everything. And then we'll just open this back up, kind of pull the collar around her and drop it back into place. And then we'll put her hands back on. And there, now when she moves her arm, just like the sorceress should be, her cape follows her. So when she chooses to move around and everything, when we move her, the cape will move with her arms. And that is really cool. And when soft goods are done right, soft goods are done right. And this is a pretty cool alternative to having a wire 
inside of there. Cause see how now she could put one arm, one arm up and it kind of creates that dynamic effect where the other arm is down and the cape kind of lays and it always guarantees that the cape follows the movement that she's taking. So when her arms are down, the cape kind of pillows out and just becomes this. And that is really solid. Now I'll show you this part that I was talking about right here. Um, there, I've got that latched both. So here's the part that was bugging me a little bit right here. Um, I'd rather that this be kind of pulled out a bit right about there. Not a big fix, but enough so that the middle is more exposed and you can see this kind of heart design that's right here. And yeah, it, it's maybe it's not intended. Yeah, it's a bat, it's a bat, but because this kind of covers those two areas. It's almost a heart design if you pull that part back a bit. It's not because that's supposed to be like the, the bat into the bat wings and whatnot. It's cool though. This is really cool. It's, this is really solid. This figure is kind of amazing. I really like this. Like, I like this. A lot. Like I said, there's only one thing I could complain about, and that's that I kind of wish that this was longer. And who knows, maybe there's a way for me to make it longer. Maybe I can customize it, kind of get a, a longer stick right here and kind of put it down and connect it out and whatnot and paint it. I don't know. Um, I normally don't customize a lot of these figures. And it's not that I it's not that I can't necessarily. There are some simple customizations and even some complicated customizations that I can and am capable of doing because I've had to do them for Gunpla. But the reason I often don't alter the action figures is because I see the art in the action figure. Oftentimes, I feel like there was heart and soul pumped into the initial designs. And yes, I realize they're mass produced and sometimes somebody didn't care enough. And when they go for the paint application, they're just like, I doop doop. And that's why you get eyes that are kind of messed up and everything sometimes. But for the most part, when I see these figures, I, f I feel the effort, the heart, the soul, the design that's put into them. And the only way I would alter a figure is if I had a second one to alter. I, the initial idea that I bought was what I bought. I bought somebody's work, somebody's art. That's what I did, that's what this is, and that's what I want going on the shelf, which I have decided uh, the gaming stuff is going to leave the shelf. It's going to go out to... Uh, it's gonna go down to my garage and it's going to be put on a shelf down there, which is specifically for, uh, like I kind of have a retro gaming area that I built out there where I have uh, an older TV. It's a flat screen, but it's an older TV and then I've got like Xbox and stuff hooked up to that, the original Xbox. So I'm gonna move this stuff out there because I just feel like it makes sense that I'll kind of build all this around the consoles that I end up putting out there around my retro setup. So that's that's what's gonna happen. And then the Masterverse is probably going to sit right here. Um, I don't know 100% if some of this is gonna be, if this shelf is gonna move up or not. Um, it might not, it might stay like this, but I know that I'm gonna gut the shelf for the Masterverse figures, especially now that we are going to start opening them. I'm trying this time to stay on top of this and open the figures as I get them. So she was like the first buy of the year for me. And we never really got a chance to open her. And I noticed immediately that I was about to kind of skip over her and go to something else and keep her on the shelf and then do a thing where I'm like, I'll open all the Masterverse later. I'm going to open the figures that I have and then open backlog as we go on. So I'll be talking about other things too, like some of the Origins figures and stuff right here that I have that I've yet to open because I got them at the end of last year and I just haven't had a chance to get around to them. But we're going to. And... You've heard my thoughts. I think she's really cool. This is a solid figure. I really cannot wait to just have this on my shelf and just have it be a standout piece. She's really cool. Oh, one one thing here. Um, get her face. Um, I'm a sucker for faces. Um, that face is fantastic. 
To some people, that's a minor thing, but the face, to me, sells a figure. It really does. Um, sometimes if the face looks really derpy or really bad, even if it's a figure that I kind of want, and I've, I've come across this with Luke Skywalker over and over and over and over and over again, and Captain Kirk as well is one of those that I'll come across Star Trek figures, and I'll look at the face, and if it doesn't feel aesthetically pleasing, not that it has to look exactly like the actor or something, but sometimes the body and the face don't seem to match, like the, the design seems off, and I, it makes me not like them. And her face is fantastic. But anyways, that's all. That, I just wanted to say that I got her. She's here. She's going on the shelf. This is cool. There's more to open later on. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.